Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Evangelist David Bybee has been called and anointed by God to fulfill the scripture. Now, let's join Evangelist David Bybee in the worship service at the Crossroads Community Church, Carthage, North Carolina. If you're a sinner and the Holy Spirit has drawn you and, and you feel a need to pray to God in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to, and, and by the way, those joining by television, uh, I'm going to stir up another hornet's nest real quick, if y'all don't mind. I, I, I don't like stirring them up, but praise God. I was, I was watching a well-known uh, television uh, person that y'all watch every Sunday also, I'm sure. And, and uh, I, this, this is, he, he's not going by the Word of God, and that bothers me. And I'm not saying that I'm the only one right, and I'm not saying that they're wrong. Because I know that God understands our hearts and He hears our prayers. But Jesus Himself, turn with me to John 16. John 16, 23. John 16, 23. Now, Jesus, we all have to agree. I don't care what denomination you belong to, what church you go to, what you like and what you dislike. We all agree that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Jehovah. We all agree that he died on the cross, was buried, and rose the third day, gave his life, shed his blood for the remission of our sins. We all have to agree on that. And in John 16, Jesus is speaking. And, and Jesus is talking to the people standing around him. And he's talking to his disciples. And in verse 23, John chapter 16, verse 23, and in that day, what day is he talking about? He says, in the day that he's called out from here, in that day ye shall ask me nothing. He said, you're not going to ask me anything. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. He said, in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Jesus is talking. He says, in that day, when I'm called up to be with the Father, he said, I'm going to send the Comforter. And all the way through the book of John, he says, ask the Father, God Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. He said, in my name, that he, may, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. He said, up to now, you've not asked the Father anything in my name. But he said, in that day you'll not ask me anything, but ask the Father in my name, and he and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. And what I'm saying is, why did Jesus tell us in the Scriptures to ask the Father in the name of Jesus, in his name? Would you think that he wrote that in the Scripture or had them to write that in the Holy Bible so that we might be obedient do you think it's for a reason to teach us how to pray? Does he not teach us in the model prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven? Did he not say, Pray after this manner, Our Father, which art in heaven? He didn't say, Pray, dear Jesus. And he surely tells us right there, Don't ask me anything, but ask the Father in my name. And I'm telling the evangelist, I'm telling the pastors, the preachers, it's there for a reason. It's there so that we can get our prayers answered. That's where the power of God is failing down here. It's not failing from up there. It's failing down here because we're not asking, believing. We're not being obedient to the Word of God. And when God tells us to do it one way, He means do it that way. He says, don't be playing around with my Word. Don't change it. He said, if you add to it or if you take away from it, you be cursed. So let's not add to it or take away. Jesus says, don't ask me anything. But ask the Father in my name that he may give it to you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I got a need. And I thank you right now. Praise God, I got a need. As long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Sister Annie Lane, singing for the glory of God. Make her welcome. Those of you joining by television, get ready. We're going to have church.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. As long as you know you got Jesus in your heart. And, and church, that's the whole point of obeying the Scriptures. They're, they're written for a reason. I, I said it over the last couple of weeks, and I'm going to say it again. If it had only been about salvation, he would have only had to write one little verse or use one little chapter in the Bible. In the New Covenant, if it was only just about salvation, he would have only needed two or three pages to write about being saved. You know, you must be born again. You've got to repent of your sin. He wouldn't need but just a little bit. But instead, God had him write the whole New Covenant, the whole New Testament. Why? Because there's more to God's will than just the plan of salvation. There's a lot of warnings in there, and there's a lot of instructions and directions teaching us how to walk, teaching us how to live, to receive the blessings. Now, there's, there's enough in there teaching us about the plan of salvation. And that's the most important part is the plan of salvation. But he wants us to receive everything else. So he tells us the do's and don'ts. Don't do this because if you do, I'm going to whomp you. Don't do this. If you do, I'm going to correct you. Don't do this. If you do, I'm going to chastise you. You're going to lose your blessings. You're not going to get to what I have for you. But if you'll do this, I'll bless you. If you do this, I'll continually bless you. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But God hears our prayers when we cry out to him. Listen to the words of this song as Brother Corbin sings. Then we'll get right into the scripture. Brother Corbin Whitaker. Whitaker. 